morning class. Uh, today I'm going to take you through um, the last chapter in the Leaving Certificate Business uh, course on Unit 7, and that's Chapter 25. Remember to uh, not study these chapters in isolation because Unit 7 should be seen as a whole, as they link together. As you see when you go to the exam papers, you'll see that the questions are divided into different sections by units. So it's important to, to link chapters together and to think of business as a whole. Okay, so keep that in mind when we're doing this chapter. It, it links very well into chapter 23 as well, okay, in particular. As you know, it's all about global business and international trade in chapter 23. And in chapter 24, we were talking about EU, and we we're talking about how the EU is a good organization for helping trade and breaking down red tape within, within the European Union. Yeah, so this goes further now and talks about business, not just within the EU, but on a global scale, in other words, internationally and around the world, okay? Right, so, um, first slide then. So you'll see that this is a, um, an activity to do in your book, and you can do it in your book, um, on Business Express, if that's the book you have. And chapter 25, um, global business is a few pages in. So they talk about a company called Unilever. And the reason they talk about a company called Unilever is because Unilever is one of the biggest companies in the world. And it owns a lot of brand names that we'd be very familiar with. So if you look at the pictures, you see Hellman's Mayonnaise, Knorr, Purcell, uh, Link Spray, Calippo, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're all their brands, in other words, they own them. They're a global business, so they operate in many different countries around the world, and they sell those products in many different countries around the world. Okay, so what are uh, transnational corporations? Okay, so transnational corporations are firms that produce and market goods in more than one country. So it's good to learn off particular definitions. That'll be a good definition to learn off. Um, yeah, so it produce and market goods in more than one country. So that means they make the goods in more than one country and the market means they sell them um, in, in, in more than one country as well. So if you think of probably one of the biggest com companies in the world, and we, we've done it as a case study, and we've sent John video links and documentation on amazon.com. And the reason we did that is because they're literally the biggest company in the world at the moment, um, if not one of the biggest at least. Their market capitalization is, is huge. It's like in the, the billions uh, of billions, we could be talking nearly a trillion at this stage. Um, McDonald's as well. Um, is a huge company, as we know. We'd all be very familiar with, with a lot of the companies here. Adidas, for example. Um, the ones we're focusing in the class are Amazon and Ryanair, for, so that we have a, an Irish company, a successful Irish company, um, Airline. Um, but, I mean, if you if you wanted to look up uh, extra information on Adidas, might be a nice one to do it on too there as well. Um, that's a big German company. Yeah, and we'd all know it from, 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 from wearing it for people who, who wear that, that brand for football and sponsorship of the big football teams, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so they're all huge, big transnational corporations, massive big companies, okay? So moving on. What are the reasons for the development of global companies and uh, home market saturation, no more growth? So what they're saying there is the reason for the development of these companies, why they're becoming bigger and bigger, is because in their own markets, so in Ireland, for example, Kerry Group would be a huge company. It wouldn't be so big if it only operated in Ireland. So they get to a point where they have maximized their sales in Ireland, the population as a whole, approximately around 5 million, including Northern Ireland. And they want to expand. And the way they expand is to export and get bigger and operate in different countries. So the reason for global companies is that they want to expand. You know, they're public, they become public limited companies and then expand into different areas. Now, Spread the business risk between different countries, yeah. So the other reason why they, why they want to go global is because if their own country isn't performing well, their economy, in other words, um, isn't performing well, which means all their businesses and their products and services and the amount of money that that country's making is maybe not doing so well, but maybe it is in, in another country. So uh, that will give you a portfolio of, of, of different levels of risk, which is good. So if one country's doing well, you might be selling loads, say in Ireland, um, whereas in, say, the Congo or something, you might be selling very little. Depends where you're operating. Yeah? You mightn't want to uh, sell into the Congo because maybe there's not a market for your product there. 
Uh, so that, that's all from market research and uh, your experts in marketing and your marketing team to find out where to sell and where, where you're going to make the most profit. Okay, so uh, achieve economies of scale. We touched on that in class a lot. Um, economies of scale talks about the bigger the company becomes, the cheaper it becomes to produce things. And also, um, the more you, you produce in bulk, the better value you get, and also then the cheaper prices uh, that you're going to be able to sell to, to, to customers. Because if you're getting economies of scale, everything's getting bigger. So um, the products per item are getting cheaper to produce. Um, yeah, and then you're so good and so experienced at selling stuff that your prices uh, can reflect the, those economies, in other words, those, uh, those advantages that you have over a small company. So you can uh, maybe compete at a way higher level than a small company because you could force them out of the market by, by reducing your costs and then pricing your products a lot cheaper, your service it could be as well, a lot cheaper and the other smaller companies can't compete. Okay, so avail of new global markets and opportunities. Um, so that's the other develop, reason for the development of global companies that they, they want to uh, enter into new uh, markets and new opportunities to make money basically for, 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 for big companies to different countries. Faster transport and communications makes international trade easier. Okay, so now that we have uh, huge airlines industries around the world, um, able to get people from A to B very quickly for say, um, meetings or if a manager needs to go and, and check out an operation, see how it's working, meet the staff, blah, 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 blah. And even easier again, and during this crisis, obviously it's uh, communications are made very easy with, with the likes of uh, what I'm using here, Zoom and, and, and people are using that a lot for, for meetings at the moment, um, along with a lot of different online uh, platforms. Um, some companies, uh, huge companies have massive big platforms run by say Oracle, and, different massive companies, Microsoft will set them up so that they can do their communications mostly online. So obviously that's way cheaper than getting a flight um, and a lot quicker and easier to get in contact with people. Um, I suppose the, the disadvantages are that you're not getting that face-to-face -face contact with, with, with your customers and with your employees, etc. Okay, so uh, e-business makes selling global globally easier. Well, prime example for that is Amazon. Look at it, it during this crisis it's actually perform outperforming every other com company again it's 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 actually suiting it if anything this crisis because people are sitting at home and they're buying lots and lots online so e-business means electronic business that means buying and selling online um e-business makes selling globally easier so the fact that amazon can reach countries in every country around the world miles and miles apart and easily sell to them. They've got distribution chains set up. They've got the direct link to a customer. So you and I in Ireland, but also uh, him and her say in Australia or New Zealand or China or whatever it might be. So um, e-business is obviously uh, a lot easier nowadays than, than it used to be when we didn't have the internet, etc. called marketing. And what we looked at uh, within that section and that unit was a marketing mix and we said another word for marketing mix was the four p's of marketing and we should know off by heart that the four p's of marketing are product price place promotion and um, there's more when marketing becomes more complicated but that's all you need to know for example for example you could add, add in packaging um, you could add in people um, some companies do but anyway for the leave insert uh, it, it, it limits it to, to, to four is all you need but when it comes to global marketing mix uh, what you need to know is that the product, price, place, promotion all uh, often have to get adapted or customized, in other words, which means changed to suit the local needs of local foreign markets. Now, companies operate this in different ways. So uh, some will use a, a standardized marketing mix, which means they don't do an awful lot of adjustments to their brand from one country to the next. And in other com companies, because of the nature of their product or service, they have to change an awful lot. Um, think about it. If you're selling into, say, Israel, you're gonna ha you might have to, because they have a good standard of English, you might have to change into uh, different languages. You might you, the symbols that you use, the colors that you use, might represent different ideas in their heads than it would in our heads. Same if you were to sell um, into China. 
um, you're going to be using a lot of different symbols, complicated symbols, and you need expertise in that area. So your global marketing mix is going to have to be adjusted to the Chinese uh, culture, to its country, to its language, to the way it does business differently to us, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and Ford here then is just Ford uh, global marketing mix. They do a, a case study in the, in the book about Ford and how they adjust their marketing mix to suit uh, the international global market. Okay, so what is the global marketing mix? So we've talked about uh, product, price, place, and promotion already. Okay, so global marketing means marketing or selling and finding out the needs and wants of your consumers and then selling them, selling into that need. So it means marketing a product globally, which means internationally, with broadly the same marketing mix as, as though the world were a single marketplace. Okay, so what they're saying there is, um, marketing your product as if uh, the world were like uh, very similar homogenous in other word for similar and you're you're not ad adjusting an awful lot of what you do where some companies as we said this word here adapt they adapt each of the elements of the marketing mix to suit the needs of the local foreign markets okay so think mcdonald's for example mcdonald's has a brand that they don't change the symbol it's still a yellow m around the world which you can find easily so you're walking down a road no matter what country you come in that brand name is going to be almost identical uh, everywhere in the world um, more or less the same with a can of coca-cola uh, but if you get a, a big mac for example in france they'll have adjusted a tiny bit in taste they'll have added things to the menu that we wouldn't necessarily have here in ireland um, and they might run different types of food promotions at different times than would in Ireland. So it's just, just be aware of that, that you might have a standardized uh, marketing mix and you might do minor adjustments within that to suit the local uh, needs of the market too. So global pricing then depends on the local market. So you need to look at your pricing globally, what you charge to your Irish customers might not be the same as what you're going to charge to some of your customers in Africa. Obviously the standard of living, the amount of wages that we get uh, are completely different um, in a lot of countries in Africa compared to Ireland. So you're going to have to change your pricing to, to, to meet those, those needs of the local market. Global place then, um, that's looking at how you're going to actually distribute, how you're going to get your products from A to B within these global markets. So how are you going to get your products uh, globally distributed? Are you going to use agents? Are you going to use uh, licensing? Are you going to use joint ventures? That's basically getting involved with another company to help you sell in that local market. Are you going to, you're going to use foreign subsidiaries. So that's basically an office. Say in China, you might employ uh, a mixture of maybe even invite people to come from Ireland if you're an Irish company want to go global. You invite maybe a manager from Ireland to go over and oversee, but you also need maybe a Chinese manager working hand in hand. And then you're employing Chinese staff. So you have a number of different variables there. You might also invite some Irish staff over from Ireland. So that's, a, 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 you know, that can be, it can be, um, it can be worthwhile and it can also be complicated to set up. So your distribution and how you, you sell and how you get your, your products to the market um, you need to consider that as a business person. Are you going to go uh, distribute globally directly? That'd be like some Amazon online. Obviously, they adjust their language, etc. Uh, when they when you see an Amazon screen, for for example, in say Russia or China, it's going to look differently to the, the Amazon uh, screen that we get to, in 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 the Western world. Yeah. So, uh, or in particularly in English speaking countries. Okay, so. Um, the brand's going to be the same, but just it, the language obviously is going to have to, you can adjust whatever language that you want that suits the local needs. Um, but if you're not Amazon and you're a company that needs to go out and, and uh, meet people, uh, maybe you're in building, you need to go and check some building sites out, see what way you're going to do it, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to have a local office and you're going to have to have something like a foreign office uh, working for you abroad. Yeah, could be an agent work in the in the country that you want to do business in say for example um, wherever it might be New Zealand or wherever and global promotion so obviously this is a, can be a tricky one for McDonald's it's not too tricky everyone knows that brand and the Coca-Cola colors the McDonald's colors they are worldwide so you can standardize a fair amount of their um, advertising and promotions obviously you have to change language when 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 uh, 
your advertising to different countries, different languages, but you also have to take in the uniqueness of every country around the world where every country has its own uniqueness, every country has its own needs, every country has its own interpretation and different understanding of different colors, different symbols, different messages. So you're gonna to have to do market research in that country and decide what, what's the best approach to getting your brand name popular and getting your uh, products to market and getting your products advertised and sold, which is the key thing. So some will use sponsorship, Think of the football jersey. I always, I always think for of, uh, for sponsorship. Uh, you see big companies all the time written on the very front of, say, Manchester United's or Liverpool's jerseys uh, or Barcelona's or whatever it might be. Um, and it's obviously got worldwide appeal then because people can see those soccer games around the world. So you're advertising your brand worldwide. PR, as we said, you can use social media or the news, get positive news stories about your 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 company and your brand into the into the media, and the media can be your social media, your newspapers, your TV, your billboards, the whole lot. Um, the internet, obviously, there's, ways of there's loads of different ways nowadays to promote in various different ways on the internet to attract customers. And then trade fairs is, just say you have a, a company and you want to make it popular in the local, uh, in the country that you want to operate in, say you're, you're trying to expand into France, for example, well, you might see what trade fairs are on in Paris, say, in the next uh, few months then you bring your product and you bring your people over there you create a stand in that uh, big building with loads of different companies in it and what you do is you try and uh, persuade people to take on your product to buy your product you create links with your product maybe to develop distribution chains to develop alliances contacts that are going to help you sell that product okay again any questions you email uh Myself, I've handed out my email before, so you know it from the last um, presentation. Okay, Kerry Foods. So a brilliant company, um, um, Kerry Foods. It's one of the biggest in the world, if not the biggest, for the ingredients that you see. So you read the ingredients of most packages of foods. Um, you can be guaranteed nine times out of ten, Kerry Group have got some of their ingredients in that, in that packet of food. So that's something to be proud of. It's a great Irish company. Um, very profitable Irish company um, and even during the crisis there's going to, always going to be need for ingredients and food so uh, good overall company and one worth researching so we've got Ryanair the airline with Michael O'Leary uh, this is another one a big Irish company uh, if you prefer to to do some uh, work on that we're going to concentrate though, on is Ryanair and Amazon or uh, Google we're saying if you didn't want to do Amazon okay so moving on what are the benefits and risks for a business operating globally? Okay, so the benefits then are of, uh, of going global are you've obviously more countries that you can sell to. The more countries you can sell to, the more sales and profits you can potentially earn and make. You've ge you can generate economies of scale because the bigger you get, the easier it, is, easier it is to produce, the cheaper it is to produce, and you get into mass production of items. Uh, it becomes very cheap to uh, to make different items. If you even take the example of Country Crest, an Irish company who produce uh, vegetables, they were recently on Grow, uh, Cook, Eat on RT2 and um, on Wednesday nights, um, an interesting uh, series. But what, 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 tying it into this, they are a, a company who said they can't compete uh, by, by only producing a small amount of vegetables that they need to really concentrate on certain types of vegetables and produce them in mass numbers to be able to compete with big uh, companies around the world and also to be able to be up to, up to spec for what the retailers, uh, i.e. Tesco's, Super Value, Dunsers, what they want and need um, um, in terms of vegetable production because they, have to, they, have, they, they often give cheap prices into, into those retailers. And what they prefer to do is go direct and be able to sell directly locally to people for, for, for a better price. Uh, anyway, so that's Country Crest. They've got economies of scale at this stage because they're producing loads and loads of vegetables with massive machinery and massive amounts of land. Um, and they're able to get their prices down uh, by doing that. Okay, so global brand recognition is another benefit of going global so in other words your brand gets known around the world think of mcdonald's the m sign known globally think of the nike tick think of uh, 
Coca-Cola, the red and, and white writing in, uh, in, in, in the middle, and the, the actual writing itself is, 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 is a symbol worldwide. Now. So business strength and survival. Um, so you're going to survive arguably better if people know your brand name and they know it's a brand name associated with quality and something that they really like. Um, okay, and then the risks then uh, for business operating globally are you might not be able to meet the customer's needs properly because you're, um, you're trying to sell into different countries around the world. It's, it's not always easy. It can, it can be hard to... To, to manage, obviously the more variables involved and the more languages involved, the more, obviously it's more complicated. Um, but having good people and good ICT systems can, can really help that. And um, diseconomies of scale, such as poor communications. So if you have poor ICT equipment, or you've just so many different levels and layers of management, this ties back into our other chapter when we're doing organize, organizational structures. So if you have a poor organizational structure where communication is getting lost because you're getting so big, that's, it's becoming very, very hard to manage and to communicate with your managers and your staff and your customers and your stakeholders. Um, obviously, that can be a disadvantage or risk. And then global scale risks. So what are they? They're the likes of uh, huge ones like uh, climate change coming down the tracks, such as the COVID-19 uh, virus currently happening. That's affecting all economies. Um, around the world um, and that's a global risk and that's a massive risk for these global com companies and it's a massive risk for Ireland and its global companies because um, there's going to be a lot of countries that are going to suffer and not going to be buying uh, the products from those Irish companies they're not going to be able to afford it um, they might have to scale back in other words reduce their employees reduce their production in those countries and reduce their sales in those countries out of uh, no choice because people uh, will uh, be losing jobs and people will be uh, will, will have less money to spend on their products. So um, those global risks are, are are happening now. And also you'd have all sorts of global risks. You had the banking crisis not so long ago. You have um, things like food crisis from time to time. You've got uh, weather patterns that change food production for example that's a risk as well there's loads of global risks there's risks happening uh, globally all the time different pandemics different uh, problems and they impact on business globally okay and if you're a global company then obviously it's going to impact more on your type of company than if you're keeping more local okay so um <clears throat> this slide here talks about um enterprise ireland and enterprise ireland is a fabulous organization in ireland um I use it myself, my own company, Montenegro.e. And um, it's, you know, it helps, helps me in loads of ways. It helps you with your skills in terms of um, how to promote your business. It helps you web design, how to build your own website if you want. Um, it'll help you get into foreign markets if you want. It'll help give advice on those markets. It'll help give you market research that has already been done in those foreign markets to make it easier for you to trade in those foreign markets. Um, so market research is huge because that takes so much time and money and effort from people. That's great to have an organization that has done the work for you. Um, international promotion, they'll help you promote your, your brand internationally. Why? Because they want Irish companies to do well because that helps uh, create money and money creates jobs and taxes and it's all circular and it all makes Ireland uh, Inc. a more uh, profitable place for everyone. So they also help with uh, distribution chains. So they might already know someone who knows someone and they've got links uh, within those countries who have uh, had successful links with Irish companies in the past. And they'll say, right, you, we'd recommend maybe using this dis distributor. It's worked well for our other Irish uh, companies. So they have experience and you can go to them and get advice on that. Translation services, they'll help you translate and help you know maybe the ins and outs of local cultural needs. Uh, so obviously it's worth talking to them about that before you were to enter into the new market. They give you advice on regulations. Now, regulations is a tricky one because laws and regulations are not all the same around the world. They're similar within the EU because the, that's what the EU wants to make business and, e and trade easier. But if you go to other uh, countries outside the EU, their laws and their reg regulations and the way they do, want to do business might be very different to the way we do business uh, in Ireland and within the EU. So you need to get advice on that. They also have grants, so that's uh, free money that you don't have to pay back. 
And then they give venture capital. And what venture capital is, they uh, invest money in your business uh, with the hope that they're going to get a return on it. So we did in previous chapters that uh, when you invest in a company, you invest in equity. Um, so you take a share, you buy part of the com company, and then you get paid things called dividends, which is uh, maybe a monthly check in the post. If, you're, if your company is profitable, then you get payback from that company. And then if you want to sell on your shares in future, then hopefully the companies become bigger and you've made money and uh, Enterprise Ireland has made money on your company and they, they'd sell their shares maybe into the future. Okay, so moving on. Oh, that's it. Okay, so again, um, that ties up the, the unit seven. Um, I hope you've learned something and we were able to add a few key points into the slides that are there already. Um, again, if you have any questions, you have me online and um, please use that uh, services available to you. Um, let's look. Keep well. Bye bye. Yeah.